Good morning, and welcome to day two. So yesterday, I cut out the foam. Well, I marked the foam, cut out the foam, took the paper off, uh, covered both sides of the Dollar Tree foam board with packing tape, and put in the A-frame of fiberglass rods and glued the foam together. And as you can see, it's now sitting there. It's been glued. The glue's been drying for probably about 18 hours. It didn't need to dry that long, but that just happens to be how much time has elapsed since I've gotten back to this. And now I'm ready to do some cutting of the leading edge and then mount the electronics. So let me mount my camera back in its handy location. How's that look? Here we go. Let's take this stuff off. See what we've got. Or see what we have, depending on how you speak. Wow, I could use more space here. All right. <clears throat> Beautiful. As you can see, it's been glued to the board below it. Hopefully not too aggressively, and I can get this off. There we go. Oh, it looks kind of like a wing, doesn't it? Looks like it might fly. It's not too heavy. I mean, it's going to be heavier with the electronics and motor on there. Um, but at this, as I said before, my goal is to have a fairly powerful motor on this one. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to cut this leading edge. Ah, before I get started with that, alternative materials. It's not essential that you use this Dow Cladmate. Uh, you could use pink styrofoam half inch Dow Cladmate half inch for the top and bottom steps of the uh, KFM4 airfoil. Um, you could also use another sheet. Two sheets of Dollar Tree foam board, top and bottom, layered and glued together. Or something I haven't tried, I wonder if a single sheet top and bottom would give you less wind resistance but still give you some of the advantages of having the KFM airfoil as far as lift and stability goes. I haven't tried that, but I can imagine it would work. So your materials list could be uh, five sheets of Dollar Tree foam board, four sheets of Dollar Tree foam board, or one sheet and two spare pieces of this uh, Dow clad mate or the styrofoam pink uh, insulation that you have lying around or you, or you buy. Uh, people also use uh, six millimeter Depron, which is not easily accessible for me, so I don't use that. Okay, here we go. Cutting. It's always best to have a nice sharp knife when you're cutting these. And you would think that I could find my knife. Seeing as I was the only person in here yesterday, where would I have put it? Ah, here. That's not going to be a long enough blade. So let me find another knife. A slightly longer blade. Let's try this one, see how it goes. So what I like to do is I like to, you can cut up to half of the width of the step and then at an angle so that you pretty much intersect halfway down the front. That's uh, that'd be the ultimate goal. Now I see when I'm going to do that. I'm going to be cutting, basically cutting this entire nose piece that I've created here off. Um, not terribly happy about that, and not sure what to do about it. Not sure what to do about it. So I'm just 
kind of eyeballing here. Usually I would give it, uh, I could give it up to two inches. Um, I'm going to give it just a touch less than two. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to ignore the, the uh, repercussions here. This knife is not nearly sharp enough to get the job done. See how I'm wavering a little bit during the cut. I am going to sand this afterwards. When it's sanded and covered in packing tape, you're never going to be able to see that ugliness. If you're thinking of doing a scratch build and you've flown enough that you think you're ready to fly a wing, I really do recommend this one. I mean, this one's a little bit harder because I'm making it a KFM4 instead of a KFM2. Make it a KFM2 just by not doing the bottom piece. And it's really, if you look at it, some of the other flight videos on my channel. These are fun to fly, they're easy to fly, they're really almost indestructible. Wow, I really overdid it there, really did. That was too much. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, maybe just slightly less of a step. Not less of a step, but less of a, uh, less close to the front. Woo! That is one ugly line. Let's hope I got lots of sandpaper. Here's the general idea. It's cut out and now you can see the top and bottom of the wing kind of angled in. You could come further back. I would need a slightly longer blade than this to get that to work out. Uh, if you had a hot wire cutter as well, you'd probably do a little bit better job. I'm sure you guys can come up with something better. For me, that's going to have to do. So now the next step, I'm not sure what I'll do with this front piece. I may cut out another little front piece and glue it on just to give it some aerodynamics up above to get up above the battery to just so that the the wind doesn't hit the battery square because as you can see no matter which way you put the battery in you're gonna have a square edge here it would be nicer if it came up at a bit of a slope there okay so it's time for sanding and I'm gonna turn the cameras off uh, probably mount some video glass camera and take this outside because I don't like getting the dust all over and sand it. Oh. Alright, we're back inside. And fingers are still a little bit cold. So what I'm going to do next, well, first of all, I'm going to mount this funky camera again. Back up in his favorite mounting spot. And that's the Mobius Action Cam. And an eBay equivalent of a Gorilla Pod. Okay, so I'm going to 
wipe this down a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is ultimately I'm going to put uh, packing tape on this. And I've never found that the packing tape sticks well or sticks great to begin with on this stuff. But definitely if you've got little remnants of blue foam sawdust on them, it's going to not even, even stick not as well. So I just wipe that down, get that stuff off of there. Now I've got a dilemma. Here we go. I've got foam pieces. Do I bore you guys with more packing tape right now? Or do I start to mount some electronics? Or do I try and figure out what I'm going to do with my little front piece? I think would like to do the front piece. I wonder if I can wing it. If I just cut those off. I wonder if I can get my battery compartment a little further back. This is something that definitely should have been done ahead of time. This is a complete lack of, of planning on my part. Is what I should have done is I should have made this area big enough not only right now I don't even have room for the batteries because I'm going to use a little bit more room in the front but it should also have room for my receiver in the SC if I want this thing to go fast I'm going to have to make some changes so of course top part of this Actually, that wasn't that bad. Okay, so I think that little bit of extra room is going to allow me to put a little front piece on here. Get my handy pin out. Let's see what we're going to do. We try something like this. This does not need to be this difficult. I'm going to show you again. Okay. Oh, that's difficult. See, being right handed, I don't want to cut my hand off. Same time. I want to make this cut fairly good, so I'm going to try and do it left handed here. How's that going to look? Close. We're going to need that edge. We're going to need that edge. Oh, I guess I did need one of those two edges. What are the chances I cut my finger off here? Yeah, not bad. Lefty. I like it. I like it a lot. And the material to glue that on would be a hot glue gun. Yes. No. You know what? This will be glued on later. I'm just saying that because I don't want to, I, I do want a, a glue that's going to set properly and I don't want to take up too much time on the video concentrating on that. So I can tape these up. And when we play this back, in all likelihood, uh, I will speed this section up so you don't have to. 
don't have to watch me tape. One thing you have in this hobby you didn't have 20 years ago it's cheap electronic equipment. YouTube. There are a ton of people on YouTube that are willing to show you what you need to get started. Tell you pretty much, I'm going to list uh, the exact parts list. So what you need to buy, they'll tell you up front what it's going to cost you. And to be successful, all you really need to do is listen to them. Where 20 years ago, you'd be spending a thousand dollars to put a plane in the air that can do what these ones do. We're pretty close to it by the time you got a transmitter and a transmitter and receiver set up. Of course, you can still spend a thousand dollars if you really want to. All right, how's that look? You like those squiggles? They're awesome, aren't they? Well, we're almost ready to melt some, some electronics. So I'm going to shut down the cameras, do a little bit of cleanup. Should I cut out the ailerons first? What's that? Yes? Okay. <laughs> 